Hey Greens, and welcome to episode three of behind the scenes of the last two years of me putting together the Not Another Crap Kit craft kit, our own craft kit, finally. Oh, and many of you were asking if we can have a sign up for your email so that you can know when the website launches for pre-orders. I will leave a link down below and as the pinned comment. Yes, you can definitely sign up and you'll be notified about an hour before launch so you can get one of the limited quantities that we do have. Remember, these are limited quantities. If you haven't seen episode one and two, make sure you check them down below. This is what the thumbnails look like. So you'll get a better understanding of more behind the scenes and the idea behind the entire kit. But for those of you just wondering real quickly, the idea is that this kit will allow you to create a custom sculpture or some people might call it a designer figure kind of thing. Very similar to my Sofubi sculpture, where we had a base and we worked from there. And I am partnered up with Smart Art Box and they are just great at focusing on quality. They are the same people who did Jazz's boxes. So we're basically, the, we're on the same route to quality of the Jazz boxes. So similarly to the previous videos, we're going to be watching and I'm going to be reacting to past Jackie and giving commentary while past Jackie is discussing the material and future Jackie interjecting if I have something interesting to say to add onto it. And I figured I'd wear a different hat because the last two videos, both past and future Jackie were wearing the same hat, so it got a little confusing at some point. So this hat was made for me by Cat and Raven Designs. Look at it, I got raccoon ears. This is from my gaming channel once, it, once I get back to it. I really miss gaming and streaming, but my health has been really poop. Let's just focus on one thing at a time right now. Craft kit, let's watch past Jackie. This was edited by Jamie, so I have no idea what this video is going to be about. Let's go ahead and see what past Jackie's up to. Hello, it's Nerdy Crafter. Welcome to another episode. I am getting my own craft kit. Let's test out all the materials. <laughs> I am still super excited and absolutely okay, come, come 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 closer. <laughs> okay, a little a little too close, I guess. So today we're going to be testing out some more materials in order to see what's the best effect we can get in terms of decorating. Right now we're looking at basics. So if you haven't seen episode one, make sure you check that one because we checked even more important basics today. We're going to be testing out some inks and some iridescent pigments. Let's check them out. All right, so you know how when I make my creatures, usually for the dome cabochons, I end up putting just a little bit of iridescent nail polish, which is usually pretty expensive. So in case you don't know, here is a video of what that looks like. Usually what I do eyes, I want them to be extra shiny. So I do use, hang on, I think I have it here. This nail polish over here that makes a really nice effect, but you really have to find this specific nail polish so that it's not opaque. And then it just covers whatever colors you put on there. So instead of including <laughs> nail polish in there, I was like, okay, maybe I can try iridescent art supplies. Now I remember, I think I tested maybe five or six. I could be wrong. Let's see what past Jackie does because we want shiny eyes for our creatures. Sometimes, not all the time, but at least you have that option. You're seeing B-roll. I usually put a little bit of coat so that when you turn the eye around, there's a little bit of that really cool sheen going on. The idea is we're going to be testing a few different actual craft supplies. This is an alcohol ink. So we're gonna try this one. We're also going to try one by Spectrum Noir. I mean, look at that beautiful, hang on, look at that. Don't tell me this is not mesmerizing, holy moly. Although this is not iridescent, it's kind of just like, I guess, mica E. This one seems to be iridescent, but I guess we'll find out and see how it's going to look like. I know I am very close right now, just bear with me. <laughs> and then we have other ones by Spectrum Noir, except these ones are kind of, yeah, of course. Of course. Good job, Jackie. These ones come in pen brush form. So, so we're gonna try them in the uh, in the little domey things for the eyes that I make and see which one yields the nicest result. Let's go ahead. All right, so I'm just going to put a piece of clay down and then put three different eyes on there. And I'm going to label which one is which so that I don't forget, because I have a tendency to forget which one's which. There we go, now we have them in place. So this here is going to be this ink. Over here, we're going to have the Spectrum Noir Vial, which is 
this one over here. And the last one is going to be the Spectrum Noir paint brush pen. But I'm also going to have this one, which is going to be our regular, so nail polish. So we're going to use our iridescent nail polish on that one. I love the fact that I did a control. <laughs> So we have the usual that I'm going to use. I didn't think of that. Like future Jackie is obviously not as smart as past Jackie because I completely forgot that that would be a good idea. It would be to do the base of the one that I always use and then move forward from there. I'm pretty sure at this point, if you've seen any of my crafting videos, you probably saw the one that I was using since this video, which was the last two years. And I've been using them in my videos. So if you don't remember, it's okay, don't tell anyone. It's a secret, you're gonna find out at the end. Before we do anything, I'm going to have to paint a black dot on each one, so that's the eye. Now I'm going to test the metallic colors, more specifically in gold and silver, just because when we're doing eyes, usually the around the black part, we either put gold or silver in order to make the eyes pop out a little more. So let's see how much control we actually have with these things. Time to gently squeeze. I'm always scared to overflow this stuff, but keep squeezing. Hello. <laughs> we'll be back after this message. All right, so we had a tiny accident. <laughs> kind of went all over the place, but I'm hoping this is... Okay, there we go, I can see it leaking. Yeah, I'm just not a huge fan of different kinds of ink pens because they I always mess them up. They are not beginner friendly. They're not Jackie friendly for some reason. So I was like, I'm not going to put this in a kit. I think at that point I had already made up my mind. This is not going in the kit because you can ruin so many things, especially your surface. All right, let's let it do its thing. All right, yeah, this is really messy. This is liquidy and messy and yeah it's just way too watery this is not gonna work yeah sorry spectrum noir for this one you've been cut and not to say that it's not a good product it's just not beginner friendly for someone like me if i don't know how to use it likely is many of you grains probably don't know how to use it and will end up making a mess like me <laughs> before we go on any further we are supposed to test the pen so i'm going to try and use it just to outline well, you know what, let's just put it on the whole thing, see how it reacts with the glassy plastic part. Next is this glitter ink vial. And of course, after shaking it, you get bubbles. So we have to wait for the bubbles to settle or try and blow, blow, blow the bubbles away. Okay, this is really liquidy, so we definitely can't use this to apply it. We're gonna have to take a brush. All right, here we go. Oh, that is really liquidy. That is really, really watery. I have no idea how long this is going to take. Look at that. Can you see the water? That's how watery it is. I don't think it's as sparkly for this kind of environment. All right, let's see. Next is our alcohol rainbow ink. Let's open it up. There. And since it has a nozzle, I will put one drop. Oh, ooh, that is pretty. Look at it. Shimmer. I like you. Put a second one. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Look at it dance. That's so pretty. And here's our test, which is the one I'm used to using. Oh my god, come on. There we go. All right, so this part is so interesting that I had to take the camera, as you can see, in my hand. So forgive, forgive the shakiness. I'm gonna zoom out so it's less shaky. But as you can see here, I'm gonna zoom in just slightly. <laughs> this here stays in place, but the Spectrum Noir Vile ink, interestingly enough, look at that. It's almost like it lifted the black right off the surface. Okay, so I think what I'm trying to explain is, I think the Spectrum Noir vial might have some kind of like rubbing alcohol because it really did lift the black paint completely. That's, I think that's what I was trying to express. So the, the splotch of black moves around now. That's really interesting. But as long as we don't move it, let's try to put another coat of paint on there. The ink, oddly enough, when I was kind of moving it around with this tool, started scratching the black part. And I definitely did put too much. 
So if you remember, I said, let's put a second drop. That second drop was way too liquidy, and then I tried to move it around, so I ended up scratching the black paint underneath. Don't do that. Let the ink actually sit, because it's not going to eat away at your paint. It's actually going to stay there. But don't start trying to move the, the ink around while it's wet. It's just gonna reactivate your, ink, your, your paint. Oh my God, I can't talk. Let's just be very clear, it is no different from when I'm moving around the nail polish because as you can see I scraped it a little bit so I just have to be very careful because if I like this one it just means we need to use the brush and not the ball tool to scrape things around so we'll see I'll put a coat of green right behind each one of them of regular acrylic paint and let's see what they look like I like the fact that I did the control because you could see I tried the same thing and I started scratching I'm like <gasps> don't touch don't touch it <laughs> All right, so, so first, first we're going to look at, at the Spectrum, Spectrum Noir pen, and the shine on that is there, but eh, it's, it's not, not fantastic. fantastic. And what I mean by not fantastic, wow, okay, past Jackie was smarter, but definitely not descriptive enough. It was just gray. That's basically what it was. The, the shine was all silver, it wasn't iridescent-y, and I was looking for iridescent. We have the Spectrum Noir Vial, and oh, that one's really muddy. Definitely a no-no. So I would say no, no. If there's anything I have the most hope on, it would be this ink here. It is absolutely gorgeous. I really hope it's going to give us the same type of sheen. And oh, 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 hello. It's not very iridescent, but it is really cool. I love the effect. Just to show the difference, this here is the nail polish. So you could see a huge difference in terms of the concentration of the glitter. So the concentration is what makes the hugest difference. And what I found is that in order to get it more concentrated towards the outside, you have to make sure that your, your cabochon is on a flat surface. Otherwise it ends up going down the middle. So I would say go around the rim and you're going to get a good concentration around it in the same way that the nail polish does. It's simply because the nail polish is gloopier. So you're getting better, better coverage. What I'm saying. One is liquidy and one is gloopier. You can get the same concentration if you want. So I'm pretty sure if we did maybe two layers of the glitter, we could get a better effect. Or that. <laughs> so far though, this here is my main candidate for the box. Very excited. Many of you know that I really like Sophie and Toffee's resin, so I am definitely going to go with Sophie and Toffee's resin. But now the question is, I want to make sure that your grains have light that's going to cure the resin very quickly and efficiently. And this is a really good heavy light, like holy moly, you could probably, it's like throwing a brick. So we're going to test it out and see whether or not it works as efficiently as the ones that I use, which is the nail one. But for small projects, a torch like this is more than enough. And yes, I do include a UV light in the craft kit. So you don't have to worry about leaving it in the sunshine for like half an hour, or if it's a rainy day and you can't do crafts, no, we're providing you with a light to cure your UV resin. And yes, there's UV resin in there. So let's give this a try. Put a little tiny bit in here. I know I didn't move it around too much because I didn't want to take a toothpick just for something like this. The less waste, the better. And off we go. I'm going to leave it on for about one minute. You can already start seeing the smoke. That's why you're not supposed to inhale resin. But yeah, you can see the smoke of it starting to get hot pretty much hot and start to cure. That's a good sign. All right, time's up and let's touch it. Yeah, it is pretty hot, which is good news again. And oh, wow. Oh, that worked. That is very nice. All right, so, oh no, don't fall. So even though the resin is absolutely wonderful, one of the things that we have to keep in mind is that this is the thin type UV resin. I did notice right away is that there's no detail on this star. If we look at the mold, you could see a little bit of a pattern. I don't know if that pattern's in there though. Kind of like tiny squares in there. So what I'm gonna try to do is instead of using the thin type resin, I'm going to use the UV resin for silicon mold. And that's the one that should be used. You could definitely use the other kind of resin for different projects, but for silicon molds, definitely go with the silicon mold resin. Because if there's a huge difference, then it means we need a different kind of, I'm just gonna do it this way, a different kind of resin because then we need something special for the project. Or if both of them don't show any detail, that means the detail is actually not in the mold itself. All right, off we go for a minute. All right, and in this case, all right, so in either case, there's no detail. 
So my guess is there's just on the outside the detail. All right. Yeah, it, it does feel smooth. <laughs> okay. So either or would have been fine, but I feel like this one is clearer. Yeah, we'll go with the clearer one. All right, so now what is my goal with making this craft box? As someone who constantly reviews craft kits, there are a lot of complaints that I have. First of all, so many of them just don't have an educational value. Did I learn anything new? Is it something that I can transfer outside of this box? So for this purpose, I really want my box to teach people different techniques, but if you're advanced, obviously it's probably not going to teach you something new, but for beginners, for sure, different kinds of wings. How can you do that? So I'm going to be obviously putting a tutorial together once the box is officially out. We're gonna have the, um, how cool is that? We're gonna have a video tutorial to show you how to use all the materials, and if you wanna make wings, how can you use the figure, all of these things, and how to use the resin. So for those of you who've never tried clay, never tried resin, but were really kind of nervous, I want this to be kind of your entry into it without being too intimidating. So sometimes creating a figure out of scratch is pretty intimidating. So yes, that is still my goal. And we're not just having one tutorial, we're having multiple mini tutorials. So I've already recorded at least three of them so far. One, how to use the resin, two, how to actually put the plaster figure together. And then the other one is how to make basic wings with the material that you have. And then the other tutorial is basically going to be how to use everything together with samples that I've actually made. So I'm just saying, if you are a beginner, this should be very beginner friendly. And if you're advanced, it's definitely a little bit more mellow because you don't have to focus on the, you know, the basis, the basic of the sculpture, but you can add so much detail. If you wanted to add fur to your character, you can do that kind of texture. If you wanted to do wings or tail or horns, there are so many possibilities. So that's basically what we're going for. You have the base of a figure and you can build Build on it, that could be pretty cool, right? At least that's what I think. The other thing is I really want to make sure that I include as much as everything that you need. So measuring cups if needed, but I don't think we need to measure. We're just going to have to look at it. And since this, we will need to measure. There are measuring cups. And yes, the kit does include everything you need except three AAA batteries. That's it. Three AAA batteries, for the flashlight, that's all you're going to need. Everything else from popsicle sticks to rubber bands supplied. I made sure of that. Pretty forgiving because even the one, hang on here, even the one that we added way too much water is pretty much solid now. I don't know how unbreakable it is. Let's try it. I am really, yeah, I am pressing really hard. So it's good to know that it's forgiving. So if you do mess up because the instructions say pancake batter, but you made it more like a crepe batter, which is a little- No, we're giving you the instructions. You don't have to worry about that. Past Jackie didn't know, future Jackie knows. A little more liquidy. Well, at least you know what? It's still gonna work. It's gonna take a little longer, but at least it's going to work. So I want materials that are not too, what's the nice word? Uh, it starts with an A for it's something that's a little too strict. I don't want it strict. I want these materials to be forgiving. Clay is forgiving. This plaster seems pretty forgiving. The resin, well, again, we're you guys are going to be getting some molds. I've already selected different kinds of molds. So I really want it to be, again, forgiving, easy, and fun. So these are projects that should take you, I would say, your weekend. Something fun that you can put together. So that's my goal. Something that is fun, forgiving, and somewhat educational, especially for those who are beginners. So, and I do complain that a lot of those boxes from YouTubers don't have uh, tutorials. Thankfully, Jazza had a demonstration of how to use the box. I wanna do the same thing too. I wanna make sure that I have a demonstration and final products. There's more, more materials that will be tested. I need to make sure what kind of paints I want and whether or not I want to include more of the inks, because if the inks are going to be included in the box, can we paint with them? Can we do anything interesting? Can those inks be mixed in with resin? The answer is probably not because this is UV resin that we're doing. Probably not, but we'll see how it paints and reacts on the actual plaster. Again, if you didn't see the plaster testing, it's in video one, so this is video two. Get ready for video three because I have more stuff to test. By the way, I wanna know what you think and have you ever used any of the materials that I've shown here. I'll see you guys in the next video. So it's, don't get all confused with past Jackie because video one, we test the plaster. Video two, we test the actual clay to the plaster compatibility. Did we test anything else?
And this here is video three regarding the alcohol inks for the eyes. So we're very close to launch on the 15th of June. Remember the sign up sheet for email if you want to be notified ASAP is down below. And I am really excited to just keep going. We are so close to launch day. Oh my God. Of course, expect a part four, and I can't wait to share that with you. There are some materials that I tested at the actual warehouse, so I don't have videos of these. So a lot of the stuff will still be a surprise to you. So if you're hoping that you're not going to get too many spoilers, you won't. Don't worry too much. Until then, future Jackie says, I'll see you in the next video.